Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Radio Shack store display CD that was recently sent to me by David. Now you guys can go check out this unboxing video, it'll be up in the cards right now if you want to see all the other cool stuff that David sent me. And this was actually the second package that he sent out to me. There was an initial package with a ton of Microsoft beta software because David used to be a beta tester for Microsoft, but he also used to work at Radio Shack and before he left, he grabbed this right here, which is an internal store display CD from the fall of 2001. And in today's video, we're going to be exploring this disc and seeing exactly what's on here because I'm really interested in seeing what is contained on here, especially the merchandise planograms, as you can see from that second line under contents right there, which will hopefully give us a look at how a Radio Shack store would have been laid out in the fall of 2001, like what products were on what shelves, how they were organized, and just what kind of stuff they were selling at that time. I think it would be really cool because this is just like a time capsule, essentially, because this is, again, from the fall of 2001, right around the time Windows XP came out. And very fittingly, we have a Windows XP machine right in front of you right here. This is the Dell Latitude D610. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So we're going to eject the CD drive right here, the tray loading CD drive, and we're going to pop in the Radio Shack store display CD. And we're going to see just what this is all about. So I wonder if there's like an auto run or anything like that, or if it's just going to come up with a Windows Explorer window. Okay, so there appears to be an auto run here. So it says store display support CD fall of 2001 a product of Radio Shack store display. And here is uh, all of the content. So the first thing you have is a version of Adobe Acrobat Reader, which I assume you're probably going to need because there will be some PDFs on here, at least that's my guess. Install MSN RAC software on compact demonstrator only. Uh, so this is, it was probably like a compact demo machine. Tag wizard version 4.3, detail guides, planograms. We're definitely gonna be getting into those. Uh, fixture and supply manual, past store display guides and special guides, reference manuals and order forms. Oh wow, there's order forms on here. We're gonna have to take a look at those as well. Let's just install Adobe Acrobat Reader because I don't have a PDF reader on here. There is a README document. Let's see what this is all about. So it says, before you install Adobe Acrobat Reader 5, you must uninstall Adobe Acrobat 4, which we don't even have Adobe Acrobat 4 installed, so we'll just install Acrobat 5. Uh, let's just go, I don't even know what MSN RAC software is. Maybe remote access control? I don't know. Local access phone numbers, I'm guessing. Oh, dial up RAC software. Okay, MSN RAC instructions. Before you can start selling the MSN rebate offer, you have to install the remote account creation software. Ooh. Okay, so this would be for, uh, to yeah, to sell MSN to people, I guess. Uh, and there was a rebate offer at the time. So yeah, this is what Radio Shack employees would use to sell MSN to people. And uh, I mean, this is the remote account creation or RAC tool uh, that you would install on your compact demonstrator. I don't know why it's specifically a compact. Maybe it was a compact uh, deal. You know, like you could only get it with a, with a compact machine. I'm not sure. But... Uh, we're not really going to be able to take a look at this because, well, we don't have a modem set up on this computer. I don't have a phone line that we can use this with. Here's local access phone numbers. The list of Bella, they spelled below wrong, are a list of MSN RAC numbers for dial-up connection. And I'm pretty sure that all of these phone numbers on the uh, phone number list here, there are a lot of them you can see. Check this out. Maybe one of these still works, but I'm, I'm certain that whatever server you would connect to to sign people up for MSN uh, would not like exist anymore, I would think. Like I mentioned before, believe it or not, Microsoft still offers MSN dial-up in 2020, but you sign up for it online, I believe is the only way that you can sign up for it. Uh, and so you'd have to like go to a public library or, or something if you really wanted to get MSN dial-up. Uh, you might be able to call them. We'll just install the software. I mean, we can take a look at the interface that the employees would see. So do you wish to install MSN at Radio Shack? Absolutely. And we get an error right here. The procedure entry point CM uh, FMT message A could not be located. Um, 
Okay, let's just, okay, so here it comes up with the, uh, like, make this connection available for, we'll just choose all users. And it's going to copy some files. And I think I clicked on this twice. So, phone book get country name W could not be located. Okay, maybe this is because we're running XP. All right, everybody. So, brief intermission. We're here on a Windows 98 virtual machine. And I want to try out the MSN RAC software on here to see if it can actually install. Because my theory is it's just not made for Windows XP since this disk does predate Windows XP by a little bit. So we're going to uh, install MSN dial-up RAC software for compact demonstrator only. And we're gonna say yes once again. And there we go. So it installed properly that time. There's an icon here on the desktop. And it says connection manager requires some components that are not installed. Do you want connection manager to install these? Of course we do. So this time under Windows 98, like I mentioned, we have this new icon on the desktop. And if we go into programs here, uh, we do have, do we have anything in here? Um, I don't actually think we do. Okay, so it doesn't add anything to the start menu folder here, but Let's see uh, if we go, oh, oh, I think this is just a, I think this is just a connection shortcut. I think that's all this is. Yeah, Microsoft Connection Manager. So yeah, we got to log in here, which, you know, I know this is not going to work, but uh, you must provide a phone number. We don't even have like a modem installed. So I wonder if this technical support number still works. Let's try to call it right now and see. Maybe it's just Microsoft technical support. DNIS is 7111. Five, one, three, three. Well, that ain't gonna work. So it looks like the uh, number is no longer a technical support line. But yeah, this is the first thing that a Radio Shack employee would see when they start their day and start signing people up for MSN. So let's get back to our XP machine. Install Tag Wizard. So my guess is this is going to be the program that was used to uh, go around and like tag items. Tag Wizard 4.3 installation instructions has numerous improvements and will not take effect unless it is installed correctly. So it wants you to remove the old version of Tag Wizard, which we don't have. And everything is about Compaq here. It says like installing new version after quick restoring your Compaq computer. Maybe Radio Shack just used Compaq computers for all of their internal software. But here it is, Tag Wizard 4.3 Standard Release Fall 2001. And it's got an Install Shield Wizard that's going to use here. So we'll just go through that. And there we go, Install Shield Wizard completed. So we'll hit Finish. We'll go back to the main menu. And let's go to, did it create a new... Okay, here it is right here, Tag Wizard. Tag Wizard Program. No password has been established for the Tag Wizard Program on this computer. Please enter a password. Okay, we'll do Michael. You'll be asked to confirm the password by re-entering it. Password confirmed. Loading tag wizard. Tag information. Yeah, this is exactly... So here's your sample tag right here. So we're going to create a tag here. So I wonder if there is a list of like... Yeah, here's a sale tag. Floppy. Sale floppy. Watch. Sale watch. 5 by 7 Gift. FRS slash communications. Uh, I don't know if this is like a network-based tool where it would pull pricing information from a server somewhere. I wonder if we can go into preferences here. It doesn't look like it's really network-based at all. So let's make a tag for the uh, 98 PC. Uh, it would have been about uh, over a year old at this point. Essential, I forget the model number, we'll just say es Gateway Essential PC. We can put like, you know, the $5 Windows 98 PC if we want to. Features, includes Windows 98 second edition for all of your computing needs. Uh, model number, this, I actually do not remember the model number, we'll just say Essential. External service opt. I'm going to guess external service options. So control B would be, yep, bullets. And control R is registered trademarks. Uh, so that would be great because we could do gateway essential PC, RSAP value. I'm going to guess that's like Radio Shack's cost maybe because with this, no, nope, that would display on the tag. So that's not going to be their cost. They're not going to show you that. Uh, price. I don't know exactly how much this costs. Let's say... 
and I think that's a little bit more than what this would have sold for catalog. Okay, and then you've got like check boxes here, so like things that were like super awesome features, like it's got a headset jack, it's got activation included, it has with activation, we can't have both these at the same time. And then you've got each or pair. So this would be like for this, it would make sense to use each because each one of these computers costs $14.99. If you were selling like two things together as one, you would do pair. That would probably be for speakers, that would, that would make sense. So catalog is going to be the barcode number essentially, like the item number. So uh, watch as I type this here, watch the barcode change. So you see it changing there. So that's too many numbers. You see it goes off of the screen here. So right here is the maximum amount of numbers that uh, they were using for these barcode labels. So uh, we've got everything. So we can click on add tag. And there we go. It just shows up with the item number there. So you would need to have a printer set up. But this right here is what the tag would look like, which is really awesome. Then you've got a uh, like a sale tag here. So you could enter in... Uh, like what the regular price is, what the sale price is, what the start and end date of the sale is. You can also change the uh, title here. So you could not, I mean, it wasn't just sale tags. It was also like new items, great value. Uh, you've got last one, special purchase. So yeah, this is really, really awesome to just take a look at. So we'll go ahead and close out of this and we'll move on to detail guides. Let's see what these are. Okay, so we've got 101 through 401 detail guides. I don't know what these numbers represent. The principles of sales readiness, all merchandise on display, every item is priced, each product is functional, definitely wanna make sure of that. Entire store is neat, clean, and spaced. The following detail guides have been prepared to help you through all the steps necessary to achieve a 401 store status level. Use each detail guide 101 to 401 to focus on areas that need improvement in your store. So this was like a rankings here or like grades for certain stores. So you don't want to be a 101 because that would be, you see many in stock items missing, several missing and or incorrect price tags found throughout the store. So I'm assuming this would be for like a, like a district manager would come in and, and see how your store is laid out and how it's performing. And if you're uh, and then they would rank you. So you'd want to be at a 401. Uh, and then I guess they gave this to the stores themselves so they could go through and make sure that they were operating at the 401 level here. And see here we've got some images here, so check this out. So you want to make sure that in stock products placed on display, having all products on display will lead to higher stores and customer satisfaction, obviously. No holes are visible from sold out display merchandise, definitely want to avoid that. Uh, avoid displaying product with missing face tags. Products are priced correctly. All compact floor fixtures. So yeah, here's what a compact floor fixture would look like. Compact table front sign fixture CPQ001 replaces all other POP except for the model specific tear pads. Battery spinner pricing cards are used. So this is like that uh, central display that like rotates. Uh, you've got batteries on. I mean, that's what it looks like at least. And those are still around today. Let's go to the 401 detail guide and see uh, what this is about. So this is going to be like level 401. So we'll scroll down here. So this is going to be like really detailed focused stuff here. Metal detectors on display, science fair kits on display, all merchandise priced properly. Well, that's kind of like, duh. LCD TV is hooked up using the 2.4 gigahertz transmitter slash receiver. A great way to demonstrate both our LCD TVs and the 2.4 gigahertz audio video sender is to connect an LCD TV to the main output playing the RS TV DVD. Uh, Radio Shack TV DVD, I'm guessing is what that means. I don't have that here. That is a separate disc. Picture in picture functioning on the 32 inch TV. That would be a good way to demonstrate that feature. Check out those old speakers there. Although 501, it says perfect execution of all four principles of sales readiness and interactivity above and beyond the call of duty. So this is what you would ideally want to be, though I don't know how many stores actually achieved that ranking. So that's pretty cool, but obviously we're not done yet. So that was the details guides. Now we're getting into the planograms, which is what I was really excited to take a look at. So we'll go in here. And we'll see if this is, maybe this is a program. No, this is probably just going to be a bunch of PDFs. So telecommunications planograms. So it looks like we've got some store specific planograms like these two here uh, with oval floor fixtures, with round floor fixtures, non-Verizon stores, Verizon wireless stores. Let's just start with the caller ID power tower. So it's going to load up Acrobat Reader. 
And here we go. So this is the revision date here, 10, 15, 2001. And I'm assuming as we go down here, yep, this is exactly what I was expecting. So check this out. So this is, uh, there should be a list of the items on here somewhere. So yeah, here's all the item numbers. Yep, here you go right here. So it shows the pricing information, the name of the item, the UPC code and the ID number. It tells you how many facings, which is gonna be how many of them are at the very front of the display. And the capacity, you can see most of them is just gonna be one of each item, uh, except for thermal paper, you're gonna have two. Yeah, this is, it looks like these are gonna be phones, uh, two line converter, multi-tone ringer, phone flasher two, outdoor bell, pocket tone dialer, message light DC. So. This is gonna be like, I mean, this was called telecommunications. This is gonna be telecommunications related items. So this is how it would have been laid out. And then you've got like, a, I guess Sprint stores would use this right here. So yeah, look at this. This is a much larger shelf. So this would be, uh, this looks like, I mean, I've been into Radio Shack stores before and uh, I mean, I just never worked at one, but this right here is like one of the back walls, it looks like. So you've got this, I mean, this is like the entire wall here. Now you can't really see any of these items. We gotta zoom in. So let's just zoom in here a little bit and we can take a closer look at these items here. So it looks like these are gonna be some, we've got some phones here. We've got a bunch of uh, phone cords over here, all sorts of stuff. Oh, is this like a Mickey Mouse phone? I think that's exactly what that is. Yeah, so some cordless phones it looks like. We've got some wall plates here for like phone jacks and you see it kind of categorizes them. So panel nine is answering machines. Panel eight is wall plate slash hardware, accessory slash hardware, 2.4 gigahertz cordless, 900 megahertz digital, 900 megahertz analog, handset cords, adapter slash line cords. And these are big button slash trim phones. We can obviously scroll down, like let me zoom out here. So this is the same image on the first screen, just enlarged a little bit and split off like in, on the two separate pages. So this would be what you would wanna use to get like a closer look at all this. Actually three separate pages, I'm guessing. Um, so there you go. And there is a little note here as well. Please note you're only able to see the front of the angled acrylic shelves in this view. Shelves will appear to hang two slots lower than they really are. Use the 3D view to determine actual shelf placement. 3D view, interesting. I wonder if that's like a separate, uh, I would think you need a separate, maybe there's just like a separate document with a, you know, from like a different perspective. This is a much larger document as you can see. So here we're gonna get the same planogram just with the product codes as opposed to an image of the item themselves. And here is our table with all of the different item uh, UPC codes, names, the prices, how many facings, and how many uh, that you're gonna store on the shelf. And so down here we've got, yep, there's the Mickey 900 megahertz phone. So there would be just one of those, uh, like one facing and one item. But you've got for the mini flip phone, you've got one facing, but you've got six uh, items actually physically on the shelf. So that's gonna be like one row of items essentially. So how many facings that an item has is gonna be how many times that that item appears at the very front of a shelving unit. So like right here, this item you see, there's only one of them here at the very front of the shelving unit. It has one facing but there might be 10 of these items contained on the shelving unit itself. Like there's gonna be a metal rod that comes out that the items are hanging off of. There might be 10 of these items on here, but the nine, like nine of the items are behind this one item here. So it has one facing. This phone cord down here has two facings because you see it's got, there's two of these items at the very front of the shelf here. So that's the brief difference if you didn't know what a facing was. Uh, so we'll just go back to the top here. And uh, that's gonna be the case, pretty much every retail store, I would say every retail store that you work in is going to use the term facing to determine how many items that you, uh, like how many times that item is gonna be at the very front of the shelving units. So uh, yeah, here's a list of every single item here. What I'm most interested in is like if there's a computer uh, planogram, which I'm guessing there is. Let's go back to main planogram window. Compaq MSN home networking planograms. There we go, let's check this out. So let's go to, let's just do Compaq 10 foot high volume. So here it is right here. So you've got 
five panels and these are all going to be yeah like here's some cords over here these are printer cables i can faintly make that out you've got uh this looks like i can't even really read i'm trying to figure out this looks like a usb cable usb a to usb b is this printer ink yeah i think that's printer ink a zip drive <sighs> look at that this is an iomega cd drive you've got some headphones or headsets look at these old mice here compact uh Man, check that out. You've got one of these like ergonomic mouse pads that like has a little uh, wrist rest. The virtually indestructible keyboard. I wonder what that, like what made it virtually indestructible. PS2 style keyboard. This is a compact one. You've got some webcams. Here's a mouse pad here. I'm guessing this is like a generic mouse pad. You've got a couple of zip disks, disk holders here, like a CD tower. Man, this is just so cool to take a look at. This is exactly what I thought was gonna be on here. So this is just awesome to just take a look at. Because again, this is like how this store would have been laid out in 2001. And here is the table of uh, every single item on here. So it looks like we've got some Palm stuff, Palm 3 screen protector, Palm 5 screen protector. Uh, USB PDA adapter. So there's some like PDA stuff. Obviously, those were big in the early 2000s. We've got, yeah, IEEE -E -E printer cable, three inch USB cable A to B. I got that one right. So there'd be one facing, there'd be six of them on the shelf. Game Boy AC adapter. Which which one is that on? You've got a game pad, another game pad. That looks like an that looks like an N64 controller almost. You see that? Yeah, it looks like an N64 controller, doesn't it? You've got like your center. Uh, joystick here, your grip. I mean, it looks just like an N64 controller. Maybe it was for the N64. So here is, I'm guessing that this would be where the power adapter for the Game Boy is. I can't even read what this is. Look, it's like super overexposed there. Obviously, you can't really expect these images to be of the highest quality. This was 2001, and they had to do a lot of compression, it looks like, to get them... Uh, to fit on this because obviously they wouldn't want to use like the highest quality image that would make this document super large. You've got another gamepad up here. Here's a memory card. Okay, maybe this PS2. Okay, this is for a PlayStation 2. I'm guessing it's going to be up here somewhere. This looks like a composite adapter of some kind or just a cable. AC DC power pack. Maybe this is it here. Oh, here it is. Here's your Game Boy Advance right here. So you, so you did have some GBA stuff. So the GBA, yeah, I'm guessing, yeah, this is probably it right here because this looks like a yeah power pack because the Game Boy Advance just took two AA batteries it, the battery was not rechargeable like in the Game Boy Advance SP so but obviously you had companies that would sell like a rechargeable battery pack that would just you know you would take off the battery cover and then put in the rechargeable battery pack so I'm guessing this is uh, one of those right here. Man, this is really cool. So uh, let's go on and take a look at gosh Microsoft Internet Center. This looks really interesting. At least it sounds really interesting. Let's see if it looks interesting. So right here is, this is probably gonna be one of those like Microsoft displays that would have like probably your Microsoft logo up here. And then there's probably gonna be a computer, I would guess. I'm guessing that's what this huge cutout is for. And then you've got like a bunch of products down here. So you've got like a joystick, that's a Sidewinder joystick. You've got some mice, I'm guessing. Yeah, IntelliMouse and a keyboard. Yeah, this is it right here. It's a very small uh, list because obviously most of them is going to be larger items. So you've got three items that were free, apparently. You've got data recovery, hacker and ID protection, and virus protection. They all have ID numbers and UPC codes. The price of all three of them are zero dollars, one facing and one capacity. So now judging from the capacity, I'm guessing these would not be little pamphlets. Maybe this was, I mean, my guess is this huge space here would be reserved for a computer, keyboard and mouse and a monitor. So maybe these were like interactive little presentations about data recovery, hacker and ID protection and virus protection and why it's important to have virus protection. Microsoft Internet Center with MP3. So this is gonna have MP3 players. I'm guessing you won't find an iPod here. Was the iPod out? I mean, the, the iPod was released in 2001. I don't remember the month specifically, but I wouldn't think it would be on a Microsoft display. So you've got, uh, yeah, you have RCA MP3 portable CD, Lyra 2, iPack digital audio player, Kazoo MP3 player, and iOmega hip zip. And then you've got the same uh, three free items. I'm just going to put that in quotes there. Uh, the same keyboard, optical mouse, sidewinder, joystick. This is a CD player, like one of those portable CD players. 
and yeah so this is how they would be so they would be below the oh mp3 products below are secured in msn 115 glass case there were eight optical mice on the display and it cost forty dollars for the mouse the keyboard also was forty bucks the joystick was thirty bucks man look at the price of these mp3 players look at the price of the <laughs> of the cd one the portable cd was 120 dollars so that's the internet center with mp3 let's look at this one okay so hhpc is handheld pc so they are once again secured so this is one with handheld pcs and mp3 players so you've still got this top area up here and then you've got these two that are going to be secured in a glass case so there's probably going to be some palm i see 56k modem right there these are probably going to be i mean i'm guessing this one right here is going to be a palm pda let's see if i'm right obviously you've got the same items here though for some reason one of these mice images is in black and white even though they're the same item nope there's no palm stuff you've got ipac ipac casio hp another ipac and then the modem here so no, there's no Palm stuff at all. Here's the pricing. The most expensive one was the IPAC 3635 for $549.99. Let's look at networking hardware and accessories. This is gonna be like probably some modems. You got some Etherfast. I actually have a Linksys Etherfast adapter somewhere. I'm gonna be like a lot of phone lines down here, a lot of cables. Here's an RJ45 uh, crimping tool if you were actually like terminating uh, cables. This is one of these uh, DSL filters like for your phone line. What's the most expensive item on here? Looks like it's one of these routers for $229.99, although let's see if there's anything that surpasses that. My guess is going to be no, but let's see. Uh, no, that is the most expensive item. So that crimping tool is 30 bucks, and there were nine of them on the shelf one facing obviously yeah pretty awesome so that's like a bunch of networking hardware and equipment that was compact msn home networking um what else am i most interested in personal electronics okay so let's just pick one of these to take a look at boom boxes clock and clock radios handheld radios cool things on wall near counter I think that's going to be the one. So what did they consider a cool thing? Looks like a lot of things here. Let's zoom in. Yeah, we got some thermostats. I'm guessing these are some radios. Let's just go down to the item list here. Uh, yeah, radios. Uh, M&M's shower radio. That's what that was. Pencil sharpener. Blue LED keychain. Side microscope. So yeah, just some really kind of... Uh, like a hodgepodge of all sorts of different stuff. Okay, uh, how about parts and accessories? So we've got 15 series gold cables, digital audio cables, 15 series video tool and accessories. Let's look at this one. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of, yeah, all video related stuff. So you've got some tools down here. You've got some cables and wires. This is an antenna here. You can see that. We've got some RCA cables. Last but not least, let's take a look at, do we want to do specialty or personal electronics? Let's do specialty. See if there's any like, you know, sale specific planograms or anything. Uh, let's do flashlights. Let's take a look at what flashlights Radio Shack was selling. So here you go. Here's all your different flashlights. You've got like a super large one here. You've got smaller ones. Uh, you got a lantern i can make that out there this is just like one shelving unit so there's obviously not going to be as many items on here so i think that's going to do it for the planograms that's probably what most of this video uh has been on but we still are not done because we've got fixture and supply manual past store display guides and special guides and reference manuals and order forms uh the order forms i'm going to be really interested in as well let's go to the fixture and supply manual so this is probably just gonna be like one PDF, probably gonna be a pretty large, yeah, check that out. So this is, oh wow, this is gonna be like for bags and stuff. This was, yeah, fixture manual. So, oh, this has like cost information too. So for, for a bag rack, which bag holder rack for small and medium bags, it cost the company $8. You'd have to get authorization from the store manager and I guess forms, you'd have to use forms to order this, probably the order forms. Medium bag with handles cost uh, seventeen oh five for a box of five hundred bags. Oh, is it gonna have like every individual? Oh my gosh, is this really gonna be every item in here? Oh, these are just dummy models. You see, dummy radar detector. Only stores that are authorized to sell radar detectors may order the dummy model. So you'd have to call a number here, and it costs. Oh, it was free. <laughs> so you'd have to just. I mean, the company obviously paid for it somewhere, but I mean, it was just like a dummy model. 
that I obviously did not work. It was just for just to show. No, this just looks like it's going to be fixtures, layaway pads. Uh, so like if you were going to get an item on layaway, interest store, charge transfer. So this just looked like it's going to be all like internal equipment. Tag wizard paper. I'm just kind of scrolling down this document randomly here. Some of these don't even have images. Pack of five new company orientation folders. So that would be like if you just got hired, what well, you would be given personnel change records. So you got some like HR stuff in here as well. I think that was timesheets. Employee daily time cards. So it costs 91 cents for a pack of 50. Pretty cheap. New York stores only notice of termination of employment and benefits. Puerto Rico employee handbook. So if you were an employee in Puerto Rico, uh, direct deposit payroll authorization. Uh, so it's got everything categorized. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be anything like this is how much we pay for a compact computer this is how much it costs the company. I think this is just like store item like fixtures. You see we got like shelving fixtures. There was a power strip there. Pretty, pretty cool. We'll close out of that. Uh, past store display guides and special guides. So this is going to be, I guess, how to follow along with the planograms maybe. Let's, I just picked a random one here. Store display, flyer 604 guide, October 2001. So these are all, yeah, store display guides. So this is going to be signs to remove, like a little checklist here of things to remove. And there's going to be signs to cover. So this would be like transforming an existing display into a new display. Obviously, when you're in retail, you got different sales going on, different items that are, you know, you got new products always coming out. So uh, this would be for like this is for this October specific guide, you know, what you would do for that month. And this looks like it's all relating to wireless stuff. What was this called again? It was called I just picked a random one. October 604 store display guide. So it was just, uh, and yeah, you see we've got June, July, August, September, October, November, power zone refresh, connecting places, cool things, refresh guide. So yeah, this is going to change month by month. But it has all of them in here. I guess you could go and look at what has changed and maybe get like a refresher on you know the current month mall cubes, cool things make give cool things make cool gifts. New products. Mickey Mouse 900 megahertz phone. And yeah, here is, uh, remember at the beginning, we took a look at that tag wizard. Here are some tags right here. So this is exactly, just without the barcode, but this is exactly, uh, you know, what the what the customer would see. The Samsung N200 PCS phone, $200. Okay, so here's like a store layout. So this would be for a mall store. In this small store, the RCA sprint and compact tables are pushed next to each other to open up floor space to make room for toys. Here's a medium sized store and then a large store. So these would be like stores inside of uh, shopping malls. Obviously they might lay those out a little bit differently than actual uh, stores like strip stores, which it looks like, yeah, here's a small strip store, medium strip store, large strip store. So yeah, it's got the layout, which is pretty awesome. Handheld games, batteries, hearing aid battery promotion. I think we have, uh, yeah, last thing is reference materials and order forms. Current typical store layouts. Let's jump into that immediately. Uh, let's do, gosh, let's just pick a store here. Uh, Verizon Wireless strip or mall store with one T-wall. So revision date, September 21st, 2001. Zoom in here and see what we got. So this is how the, I mean, we took a look at all those planograms, right? And those are going to be for each of these different shelves here. So, but this is the layout of the shelves themselves. So you've got power zone, 14 clock radios, boom boxes, flashlights, security. So this is how all of the shelving units themselves are laid out in the entire store. So here's where that Microsoft floor fixture would go. Here's the battery spinner. Uh, and then you've got like some showcases here, calculator showcase, uh, Franklin half glass showcase, Recorders, watches, tester, showcase. Here's the Verizon floor fixture because this was a Verizon store. Oh, and this was a Sprint store, I guess, as well. Here's the doors at the very front of the store. So let's just jump to, uh, there's a couple of things I see here that I'm interested in. Tandy cabinets, order forms. Let's start with that. Okay, so this is categorized even more. We have DSM. I'm guessing district store manager, then you've got store manager. So yeah, this is what the store manager would use or the district manager. I mean, this says down here, Tandy Cabinets store manager order form. Radio Shack was owned by Tandy. So you'd actually place this order to Tandy Corporation Design and Construction in Fort Worth, Texas, or you could fax the order to this number. And uh, this is how you would order fixtures and shelving units for your store. Let's go to, let's just go back to reference manuals. 
Um, so that was Tandy Cabinet's order forms. Uh, let's look at the Associate of the Week award. I wonder what you would get as an Associate of the Week back in 2001. Certificate of Achievement awarded to your name for Associate of the Week. Radio Shack answer team store manager would sign. That's it. Just a little, uh, yeah, just a little award there. So let's, so you know what? I want to make myself Associate of the Week. <laughs> awarded to Michael MJD for Associate of the Week. And you would print that. I wonder if you would get anything like a gift card or something. I don't know. Maybe maybe they did something. Like I said, I never worked for Radio Shack, so I would not know. Voss lighting order form. My guess is this is going to be light bulbs and light fixtures for the store. Okay, so this is so this is the order form itself here. Please fax orders to Tim Voss. Let's scroll down here. Yeah, I'm guessing that's exactly what this is going to be. So this is where you would order. Yep, these are all light fixtures and light bulbs so you would place you know when you would need to get new light bulbs and stuff for your store like if a light had burnt out uh, this is where you would go to place the order you would do this you see I hear some ballasts right here so yeah there you go and last but not least I think this is the last uh, let's just go yeah this was the last category let's jump into instruction sheets and let's go to, gosh, mounting RCA digital camera bracket. So this would be, oh yeah, this is like how to mount a, a, okay, make sure that the digital camera is at the front of the camcorder floor fixture, refer to planogram number 59756. And yeah, it's like a guide to show you how to mount the camera up here. Installation of RCA ceiling speaker mounts. Oh yeah, so this is how like, obviously if you're a ceiling speaker, you'd wanna have it mounted on, a ceiling panel to uh, like show how it would look on a ceiling. So this is how you would actually mount it to one of these panels here. And yeah, this is how it would look. This is what the customer would see. Applicable to these stores, all stores. So this is where you, they would put like, oh, if you were this type of store, this would be applicable to, to you only. And if you had missing or damaged items, you'd call this number. Follow the instructions below to install your, your rear speakers for the RCA Digital Entertainment Center. So yeah, guys, I think that is... Uh, I think that's a good look at everything on this CD. This is just really awesome. Like I said, this is essentially like a time capsule. This is how a Radio Shack store would have been set up and laid out in the fall of 2001. And uh, I think this was just super cool to take a look at. But as for now, guys, that's going to end it off for me. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below. Turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I will see you all in the next video.